And now let's look at different vertebrae in different segments. This is a low back vertebrae. Ignore the hole in the center because that's just how it's secured through this metal rod. But so a low back vertebrae versus a mid back vertebrae versus a neck vertebrae. You can see that the vertebral bodies are different in each of them. The lumbar spine, because it supports the entire spine and the upper body, it's a lot larger. The This is the thoracic mid-back. It's kind of like a heart shape in the mid-back area. And the neck area, it's kind of small because it only has to support the head. Versus the vertebral foramen, which is this hole, in the cervical spine is a lot larger versus in the lumbar spine, relatively small, because the spinal cord actually is a lot thicker as it exits the skull, and it actually ends at L1, L2, and it continues a spinal nerves called cauda aquina, which is Latin for horse tail. And now let's look at the spinous processes. They also very different. In the cervical spine, the spinous processes is where muscles and ligaments attach. In the cervical spine, it's kind of like, has this little shape, which is called bifid spinous processes, versus the thoracic spine. It's kind of have like a steep downward angle versus the lumbar spine, the low back, which is relatively thick and relatively short. And the transverse processes, which are these things to the side, are also different. The low back is, again, thicker versus the cervical one. However, the cervical one is unique in the sense that they have two small holes in them. It's called the transverse foramen because this is where the artery passes towards the brain. The facet joints are also very unique to each segment. Um, each vertebrae has two superior or upper and two inferior or bottom facet joints. Facet joints are where the vertebrae connects one to other. It allows and limits mobility. So in the lumbar spine, the facets face each other kind of like little ears which allows for very good forward bending and back bending and side bending, but not so much rotation. The lumbar spine has um, actually limited uh, range of motion in rotation. Thoracic spine, the kind of like angled, just like spinous processes, um, a steep downward angle, kind of like with the spinous processes, kind of like resembles like a rooftop tile so it's good range of motion in all direction except extension. So back bending is limited in the thoracic area. Versus the neck, very good range of motion in all planes because the spinous processes are kind of small and the facets are at a 45 degree angle downward. So it allows for good range of motion in all planes. A unique junction is the thoracolumbar junction, which is where the thoracic vertebrae end and the lumbar vertebrae start, because there the facet joints, the superior or upper facet joints are one on top of the other, versus the inferior or bottom facet joints are resembling the lumbar facet joints, so face towards each other. So that's a unique area, uh, the TL junction. Now let's look at C1 and C2 because as I said, they are unique neck vertebrae. So this is C1 called Atlas, named after the Greek mythology. Atlas, who was carrying the weight of the globe. This for the same thing. The first cervical vertebrae is carrying the weight of the skull. And it doesn't have a vertebral body, but it has a large vertebral foramen because the spinal cord exits the skull. As I said, it's thicker, but also because C2 has this little bony protrusion called the dense. So it allows space for that dense C2 dense as well. And 
unique, very unique thing. This area, this C2 is called axis. So atlas and axis. And the joint is called atlanto occipital joint and C1, C2, atlanto axial joint. Also interesting that there is no disc between C1 and C2. So the atlanto axial joint doesn't have a disc between them. But the reason behind it is because it has good article cartilage and because of this dance, it allows for saying us no. So very good rotation between C1 and C2. And when we say yes, we use the atlanto occipital joint because of the articulation there allows for very good flexion, forward bending and extension, back bending. So just to recap, C1, atlas, C2, axis, in a little dense, no disc between the two of them, but this is where we say yes, and this is where we say no. Cervical spine, cervical vertebrae, large vertebral foramen, small vertebral body, um, transverse foramen for the artery to the brain, bifid spinous processes, small spinous processes, thoracic vertebra, heart-shaped body, it resembles giraffe, but that's just my personal opinion, spinous processes, steep downward angle. This is where the ribs attach um, in the thoracic area. And then lumbar vertebrae, large body, small vertebral foramen, thick but short, transverse process, thick but shorter uh, spinous process. Facets facing each other, facets at a steep downward angle, no extension, no rotation, and cervical spine, short spinous process, good range of motion in all planes.